Hi, everyone. Welcome to another session of the HBL Files. Today, we will be discussing a problem about electromagnetism. Let's begin. In this problem, we have a large horseshoe magnet that produces a uniform magnetic field of flux density B between its poles. Outside the region of the poles, the flux density is zero. The magnet is placed on a top pan balance and a stiff wire XY is situated between its poles. The wire XY is horizontal and normal to the magnetic field. The length of wire between the poles is 4.4 centimeters. A direct current of magnitude 2.6 amperes is passed through the wire in the direction from x to y. The reading on the top pan balance increases by 2.3 grams. For the questions, state and explain the polarity of pole P of the magnet and calculate the flux density between the poles. Let's look at the first question. To further analyze the first question, let's look at the given information. It says here that a direct current of magnitude 2.6 amperes is passed through the wire in the given direction. Let's label that using an arrow. Now, once this happens, the reading on the, on the balance increases by 2.3 grams. What does that mean? That means as uh, soon as the current is present in the wire, the magnet was pushed down. Now, what was the origin of the force that pushed the magnet down? Remember that when current is present in a wire like this, this uh, wire XY, that wire will then set up its own magnetic field. Now, the magnetic field of the wire interacts with the magnetic field between the poles of the magnet, giving rise to a force acting on the wire. Now, but in this scenario, if the force is supposed to be acting on the wire, why was the magnet pushed down? Remember, it was stated initially in the problem that the wire is stiff, so it cannot move. So why is it that the magnet moved down? Actually, this is governed by Newton's third law, the law of interaction, which means if the magnet experienced a force of a certain magnitude that's direct and the force is directed down the wire on the other hand should experience a force of the same magnitude but in opposite direction so since the um since the wire is stiff it's not able to move but instead the um, manifestation of the force was shown in the magnet's movement, which is going down. Now, so far we have established that the force acting on the wire is directed up, while the current in the wire is directed from X to Y. For us to be able to determine the polarity of pole P, we must determine what's the direction of the field. And to do that, we'll be using the Fleming's left-hand rule. For the first one, let us orient our thumb to the direction of the force. Next, let's orient the middle finger to the direction of the current. If you extend your index finger, making sure that your thumb, index finger, and middle finger are all perpendicular with respect to each other, 
you will see that your index finger will point in this direction. And the index finger points to the direction of the field. What does that mean? That means in this scenario, the field seems to uh, originate from this pole and terminate on that pole. But then again, just to clarify, we know that magnetic field lines do not terminate on uh, a pole. Magnetic field lines are continuous. So by convention, we know that magnetic field lines will seem to originate from the North Pole and will seem to terminate at the South Pole. That means Pole P is the North Pole of the horseshoe magnet. OK? Next, second question, calculate the flux density between the poles. Again, let's look at the given information and let's list them down. First one, we have the length of the wire that's exposed to the magnetic field. Remember, we only need the length of the wire that's exposed to the magnetic field, not the whole length of the wire. And that length will be 4.4 centimeters or 0.044 meters. Next, the current in the wire, which is 2.6 amperes and the increase in mass, which is 2.3 grams or 0.0023 kilograms. So we have here our given information. Then let's look at the equations. The question, or in this question, we are asked to solve for the flux density, which is represented by the variable capital B. And since we are dealing with a current carrying wire, we will be dealing with this equation, which is F is equal to BIL, or the magnetic force acting on the wire is equal to the product of the flux density times the current times the length of wire exposed to the field. But looking at this equation, B is unknown. We know I. We know L, but we do not know F. But remember, this force is the force that's supposed to act on the wire. But in our scenario, again, the wire is stiff, so the magnet was the one that felt that force. Since we are given with the increase in mass, we can actually calculate for that force using the formula for the weight or simply in general uh, the force is equal to mass times gravity for our solution we just have to equate the two equations so we have bil is equal to mg and manipulating this equation we'll have b is equal to mg over il Substituting the given information, and of course, for G, it's going to be 9.81, the acceleration due to gravity. Calculating B, we will have a value of 0 0.20 Tesla. Okay, so that's it. That is how we solve this problem. By the way, for your reference, guys, I have lifted this problem from this past paper. Okay, so I hope everything's clear. And as always, thank you for learning with me today. See you on the next session of the HBL Files.